Hey, it's Jared. I've recently been using a MacBook Air. This is the M3 MacBook Air. I fully spec'd it out. And the reason that I went with this laptop is because I just haven't been able to get into a routine of using an iPad Pro. The iPad Pro is a great device, 13 inch display. I'm going to do a, a direct comparison between these two devices, because if you're like me, you really want to use an iPad because of its portability. It's lightweight, it's a touchscreen, it runs apps and everything sounds great. But then when it comes to actually trying to get things done and be productive and fast, sometimes the iPad, it just leaves me running slow. I feel like I'm slow when I'm on an iPad. So I finally decided let's check out a MacBook Air. I haven't had a MacBook Air in a while, even though my kids use MacBook Airs, it hasn't been a device that I have used in a long time. I have lived in a place of it either being a MacBook Pro, so 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is where I do most of my heavy lifting. And that laptop typically is docked to a Apple Studio display, or I try to use an iPad and I tend to bumble along and not be as productive as I would like. Real quick, my YouTube analytics tell me that 97% of you that are watching this video are not subscribed to the channel. So take a minute, hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel, it helps me out. Let's jump back into the video. So with this laptop, the reason that I wanted to give it a try is because it's a 13 inch laptop, it's extremely lightweight, it's portable, and the M3 chip is very fast. Even though it's not a M3 Pro chip or a Max chip, it's very fast. And so I wanted to talk about my experiences with this laptop. I'm gonna do a separate video where I compare this laptop and the new M4 iPad Pro because I think a lot of people might be thinking, should I go with the iPad Pro because of its portability or should I go with the M3 MacBook Air because that's what's more traditional and it's what more people, including myself, are used to as far as a form factor. So in this video though, we're just gonna talk about the performance out of this device and my thoughts on it. Now the M3 MacBook Air is a great device. It's the iteration every year in the M chip lineup in which Apple has got us all rounded up into now is there's gonna be a new chip pretty much every year, just like there is with the iPhone and how that's been since early days iPhone. There's a new version of the chip all the time. Same thing with the iPad. It's the new way of, I guess, making performance upgrades, but also making us feel like our devices are old and outdated. And even though the M3 has been out for a little while now, I'm still asking myself the question, what is the best portable computing device that is easy to use in all situations, whether I'm at a desk, I'm at a co-working office, I go to a coffee shop, or I'm just lounging on the couch and I want a comfortable device that's not heavy and unwieldy like my 16 inch MacBook Pro. And I think I have found that in the MacBook Air. As I said, I haven't used a MacBook Air in a long time and I haven't used a lighter weight laptop like this for any extended period of time because usually they underperform and I can't get the things done that I wanna get done. But this laptop is different. It is very fast and the performance is absolutely fantastic. So first let's talk just a little bit about benchmarks. Benchmarks are the testing of the CPU and the GPU. It runs a, a battery of tests across the device and then gives us a score. That score we can use to compare to other devices. And so I ran the tests on this device and we ended up with a single core CPU score of 3,141 and a multi-core score of 12,018. Now, a lot of applications really just use a single core. They don't need multi-core. They might not even be designed for multi-core. And so this laptop has really good single core performance. 3,141 is really good. It's better than last year's iPad Pro, the M2. It's better than a lot of the other devices that I have run benchmark scores on over the last several years. The single core score on this M3 laptop is actually better than the single core score on my M3 Pro, on my M3 Pro Max actually. But where that story changes definitely is in multi-core. A lot of software when performing heavier tasks can use multiple cores and multiple cores banded together allow for faster processing. And the multi-core score on this laptop is 12,018. When we start to look at other devices, like for example, the M4 iPad Pro is 14,571. So a little bit better performance 
multi-core score when we jump up to M4. And that's something to maybe look forward to in this particular laptop when Apple updates it to the M4. What kind of performance can we see? The M3 chips are coming up on their one year anniversary. And so you might be thinking, am I gonna get that much more performance if I wait for the M4? And if we compare the performance of the M3 to say the performance of the M4 iPad Pro, there's not that drastic of a difference between the M3 and the M4. Of course, if I jump down to the multi-core performance score of the M3 Max, we have 21,437, which obviously is a much higher score. And the reason for that much higher score is that there are more cores. So the score is all of the cores that this particular laptop has, what is that score when they're working together? And if you have more cores, you're obviously going to have a higher score. Or of course, if you have a higher performance chip. And so being that this is an M3, my MacBook Pro is an M3, we're seeing really good performance out of this device considering it has fewer cores than the M3. But if we compare the performance CPU out of this M3 and we compare it to what I was using prior, which is the M1 Max, this actually performs better than the M1 Max. And so if you're coming from an older device, even if you're coming from an older MacBook Pro and you're thinking, ah, I just don't know if I wanna spend that premium dollar on an M3 Pro or an M3 Pro Max, this is getting you the same performance as you would get out of the M1 and the M1 has plenty of performance in today's age. I probably should have held on to my M1 instead of upgrading to the M3. But of course, there's a little bit of a different story told when we switch over to Compute Score. That's the GPU performance, and the GPU performance handles rendering, like with video games, photo editing, video editing, stuff like that. It's not your everyday computing, like browsing the web and watching YouTube videos, checking email and stuff like that. This would be the performance that your computer would have to do heavier lifting tasks when it comes to graphics. The M3 Air has a 47,932, so I'm just gonna call that a 48,000 score, which is really good, because if I compare that to the M4 iPad Pro, that's not much higher. That's 50, just shy of 54,000, so not much of a big difference there. Where we do see an obvious difference that is massive between, say, this device and a Pro, so an M3 Pro, the M3 Pro is going to blow this out of the water with uh, probably triple the score. If I look at the score that my M3 MacBook Pro Max got, 153,899. So about 154,000 is the score compared to the 48,000 score here. But like I said, that additional performance and the GPU is only gonna be utilized if you're doing heavier lifting projects like video editing or graphically intense games, 3D modeling or rendering and stuff like that. And so this M3 Air has more than enough performance for everyday tasks. And I found that to be true in everything that I've been doing on this device. So I do have a browser, I have Brave Browser and I have a ton of tabs open, probably about a dozen tabs. I also have Adobe Lightroom opened and I can switch between photos really quickly. Everything loads really fast and the images drop in and render really quickly. With Adobe Lightroom, it gives you a preview of the image and then it gives you the high resolution image just milliseconds later. It does that so that it can give you the preview of the image quickly so it doesn't seem like it's super laggy but then the image has to kind of render and give you the full resolution of the image. And that's one way that I could typically tell if a computer is a bit slower. Lightroom's gotten really good at allowing you to just kind of get through those images really fast. But then when it comes to stopping and letting it show you the fully rendered image, the high resolution image, sometimes that can lag a bit. And that's an indicator of a, a computer that either performs really well or performs slowly. And I'm not noticing much of a difference at all here on this device compared to my M3 Pro Max. And that's a big deal to say that this isn't really any slower, noticeably slower for me. Now, of course, where I did notice this device being a little bit slower is when I would render out larger batches of photos. So I'd render out, say, 150 photos. Yeah, that's going to take a little bit longer because it doesn't have the GPU performance that a pro does. But when it comes to doing everything else in the software, as far as making edits, jumping around the software, things that probably lean more on the CPU, 
I'm seeing fantastic performance and no issues there. And so everything that I typically do on a computer throughout my day, unless it comes to rendering out longer form video, videos like this that take a bit of time to render out, or if I'm rendering out larger batches of photos, I'm not noticing any difference in my experience with this device. Now I will say, as far as screen resolution goes on the MacBook Air, that's something that I wasn't really used to. I'm used to the MacBook Pro line and also the iPad Pro line, which has a much more pixel depth display. And with that increased PPI gives me the ability to have more screen real estate by shrinking down the user interface and allowing more room. So when I'm editing a photo, on a 13 inch device like the iPad Pro, I can see much more photo and I can have all of the user interface be kind of smaller and out of the way. And so it took me a little bit of getting used to, instead of having applications open far enough so I could still see Stage Manager, I, I have to have applications open almost full screen here. Even when I'm browsing the web, I kind of like to have a full screen application here as opposed to having it off to the side a little bit and being able to see what applications I have opened over in Stage Manager. If you don't use Stage Manager, it's probably not even gonna be a big deal to you, but it's something that I noticed when I started using this device. So there were two real main concerns that I had with a smaller device like this. Number one was the amount of RAM that I would be able to get in this device. I can't get as much RAM as I can get with the Pro, so I max this out at 24 gigabytes. That amount of RAM seems to be really good for the type of work that I'm doing on this laptop. Laptop. 24 gigs of RAM, even though it seems like a small amount in comparison to what you can get on a MacBook Pro, it's more than enough for everyday work on a Mac Air, including all the things that I've been talking about so far in this video. Battery life was the other thing. This is a small, thin device. Is the battery life going to be able to get me through the day without having to adjust my usage behavior? Well, this device doesn't get charged in the same way that my other laptop does either. My other laptop spends its time connected to a monitor and it's getting a charge. And typically any time that I take it off of the desk, it has a full charge on it. This tells a different story because it's going with me. It spends time in a bag. It spends time next to my bed because I might be working on it a little bit late at night or I might be on the couch or I might take it to a coffee shop. And so it doesn't spend all day plugged in getting a full charge. The last time that this laptop had a full charge was four days ago. It was charged to 100%. And a lot of times, especially these Apple devices, they use a little bit of power even when the screen is closed because it's running some things in the background, checking your email and stuff like that so that everything is up to date. The Find My is also running in case you lose your device so that it can be found even if the laptop screen is closed. And so there are some things using power 24 hours a day when your laptop's not plugged in. So beyond those things, today I've had about an hour and a half of screen usage on this device. Yesterday, I had pretty close to three hours of screen use on this device, and I'm at 32%. Now, I've also ran some benchmark tests, exported some photos, and done some heavier lifting tasks on this just really to see what kind of performance I can get out of it in preparation for this video. And that represents itself in the energy usage bar right here. There are a lot of instances when I'm using this laptop that I'm really consuming a lot less energy because I'm doing smaller tasks like browsing the web. Today and yesterday, I've obviously been using a lot more energy on this device because I've been running tests. And so I've been really impressed with the battery life out of the MacBook Air. It's definitely a device that I can use all day long without having to worry about plugging in. So let's round off this video. I'm gonna talk about my usage and then maybe give you some thoughts as well. Obviously, I have a more powerful laptop to use and not everybody is going to have multiple laptops and doesn't find a need for multiple laptops. You're probably wanting a laptop that is going to do it all for you. And I think the MacBook Air is absolutely that laptop. Even though the M3 chip will soon be replaced with the M4, the amount of performance that this laptop has is going to stand the test of time for at least five years. Macs are built that way. They're built to perform for multiple years, not only with the battery, not only with the performance of the device itself, but also with the durability of the device. I use my laptops like crazy. They are used all day long. They are used hard and they last. And then when I sell a laptop to somebody, they end up using it for three or four years after that, and it lasts them a long time as well. 
Macs are built to last. And so I believe that the M3 Air is a laptop that is a great buy right now, not only because the price is good on this device, even if you decide to choose a higher spec version with a little bit more performance or maybe even a little bit more RAM or storage, the pricing is still pretty great if you compare that to another device. Now, later on this month, I will be comparing this to the new Surface laptop that has new chip technology in it as well. And I'll be back to report my findings there. And of course, I'll also be comparing this to the iPad as well. I really want to see which device is the most productive for me. And I have to be honest, I'm really just leaning towards a laptop. I really struggle with iPads being anything more than a fancy Netflix device. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you're looking for a MacBook Air, I've got links in the description to a couple of different places that typically have pretty good prices on these devices, as well as good return policies. So definitely check out the links in the description. With that, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.